growing up in a christian home being a pastor's child uh, i had a lot of advantages uh, wherever i went uh, people uh, never corrected me even though i did a lot of mistakes people just let me go because i was the pastor's kid i knew my parents loved jesus and they loved serving people when your father is a pastor you don't really get to choose to go to church every sunday you have to be there regardless of how you feel but still i had a lot of questions in my heart that i could not find answer to questions like if my parents are serving the community and if they are serving jesus why are we still having financial difficulties and if jesus is the head of our family why is our family still dysfunctional with so many questions unanswered i slowly started to drift away from god's presence i still remember one day i was standing in ejipura bus stop with a cigarette in my hand and all of a sudden i noticed two people walking towards me i thought they were going to ask for directions but suddenly they asked hey do you want to know about jesus i literally froze i could not answer i was panicked and i was thinking to myself should i continue smoking or should i drop the cigarette down but i said hey you know what i don't have time for your jesus and i got into the bus feeling so guilty because i denied jesus and one of the major turn arounds in my life was when i was in bcom like all of us i met a beautiful girl i remember thinking to myself that i could not live life without her little did i know 6 months down the lane we broke up and after that the next 2 years i was in depress believing the lies of the enemy that i was unwanted that i was unworthy not good enough to be loved and guess what i ended up believing these lies and settled down i still remember one day they had invited a guest speaker in our church just another service as i was sitting there all of a sudden the pastor said who is jabez and i was wondering is it really me because are there any other jabezes be sitting here in the church i was waiting for somebody to get up but nobody did so apparently i had to get up and go forward and the pastor all of a sudden he called my name he said jabez god has a word for you and he started speaking life into me he said that you are going to be used powerfully by god in the future I will never forget that day. You know why? In my past, I was humiliated a lot. But can I tell you when that man spoke life into me, when he mentioned my name, there's something on the inside that revived. When you go closer to God, he calls you his friend and he calls you by your name. And that's what happened to me that day. I will I still remember when he called my name. I can almost hear God speaking to me saying, "You know what? I still remember you. You are not forgotten and you are still worthy to be loved and that changed my life because when we tell our weakness to our friends there are chances of them using it against you but can i tell you when i told jesus my weakness all all the weak areas all the areas that i am struggling in which i could not get out with my own strength when i told that to jesus he was not ashamed of me he actually was so proud and he helped me to get out of all these addictions day by day it was a journey that's the beauty of living our life for jesus it's a beautiful journey where we become more like christ when we spend more time together with him once i resurrendered my life to jesus it wasn't easy it was not an overnight change can i tell you it was really really hard to give up on the addictions to give up smoking or drinking it wasn't easy I sometimes I felt like I was running around in circles. I said, with everything that I have, I'm going to give it to you. Use me. And from that day forward, God started doing amazing things in my life. 2017 October, I I will never forget what happened. We woke up to a bad news. It was so devastating to know that the whole building has collapsed and there was a cylinder blast and eight people lost their lives. When we went into the building I noticed there was this huge wall which was fallen right where I usually sleep. Can I tell you I was not lucky. It was God's hand of protection over my life and my dad was supposed to come back to the house last night but guess what he was delayed something happened and he stayed back in Coimbatore. When I surrendered my life I noticed that God's hand of protection was over my life and the devil could not destroy me. 
this was the birth of my vision the beautiful gate we all know this story uh, peter and john they're walking towards the temple and they find a man who is crippled from birth he was there near the gate for over 40 years and the gate was called the beautiful i am so able to relate to that story because i am the man who was crippled near the gate called beautiful and you know why he was able to see people on the inside enjoying life he was able to hear children laughing he was able to see people running around but here he was outside the gate crippled not being able to experience the joy that the others were experiencing and immediately john and peter they look at this man and says in the name of jesus i command you to get up and walk and immediately there was a healing and today my vision is this like people like me who had no future i thought my life was over when somebody left me i had so many questions unanswered i felt so condemned when i denied jesus when i found myself outside the beautiful gate here came jesus who ushered me into the beautiful gate what is the beautiful gate can i tell you my friend jesus is the beautiful gate and i believe on the other side of the beautiful gate there is forgiveness there is hope there is restoration there is acceptance there is life and life abundance today from my life what i want to encourage you is this that there is a lot of hurt there is a lot of mistakes but that's not the end when we enter when we draw ourselves closer to the beautiful gate there is life on the other side my name is jebis and this is my story